Welcome back to Near Main Condition. This is Omar, and today I'm going to show you an overview of the X-Men Revolution Omnibus by Chris Claremont, where it takes place in the chronological reading order, what the inside of the contents are, and the most important question, whether this is a must-buy or, eh, you can kind of skip it. So please stay tuned. All right, so let's look at this omnibus, this kind of weird out of nowhere omnibus that Marvel decided to release. Here is the back cover and the spine with Rogue because she does play a prominent role in this. She becomes, spoilers, one of the leader of the X-Men. Um, if you're wondering where this fits in, if you collect all the oversized hardcovers and omnibuses, this fits in right after Operation Zero Tolerance and before New X-Men, which is kind of crazy because there's such a huge gap. But if you also collect the trade paperbacks, this reads right after X-Men Powerless and right before X-Men Dreams End, the trade paperback. Even though Dreams End is collected here, this is really stupid, but they don't have the aftermath of Dreams End. And then after that is Eve of Destruction and then new X-Men. All right, let's check out the omnibus and what the contents are here after that long spiel after where it belongs. So this is the return of Chris Claremont. This is the, after he had been writing X-Men for 16, 17 years, he left right after X-Men 3. That was his last one that he wrote, and that was in 1991. There's a little forward here explaining what the story, what happened right before. So this is during the revolution era of the X-Men comics, which was going across the board. I believe Warren Ellis wrote X-Force and Generation X, and then X-Men went through a revolution. So all the X titles were going through revolutions. It was like a creative shift on the team. And they took the time to do this revolution event and reintroduce Chris Claremont into the X-Men universe. So he had been gone for a while, since 1991. And this is like, uh, probably, late 90s i want to say this is actually in the year 2000 because the annual 2000 is included in here it's gorgeous art by lionel francis Yu. so what this does contain is x-men 100 to 109 uncanny x-men 381 to 389 x-men unlimited 27 through 29 x-men black sun the miniseries 1 through 5 and i think that was the 25th anniversary of the new x-men and then bishop the last x-men 15 through 16 which is the last two issues of his series uh don't let these issues in any way influence what that series is about because that series was way phenomenal i really really liked it it's one of the most underrated x series ever because he had been floating up in space and then he gets just shifted into the future where he is fighting fitzroy who is now known as the chronomancer uh, this also contains cable number 87 and annual 2000. So that's everything in this book. So like I mentioned, yes, Bishop was up in space. And hey, there's Moonstar. I love Daniel Moonstar. One of my favorite characters. Um, Bishop was up in space. He got sent to the future. The X-Men had just finished fighting Apocalypse. And during this time, Cyclops is dead. Yeah, kind of sounds familiar, huh? So the X-Men are left to pick up where he kind of left off. Professor X is like training a group of scrolls up in space. And actually the little forward probably explains all that. It's gorgeous art by Adam Kubert. Here's Tom Rainey's artwork. So you get some kind of top A talent. Another thing that I didn't mention was this takes place six months after the last issue of X-Men and Uncanny X-Men. So it's like a six month time jump. And you don't really get to find out what happens until later on, like how some of these characters join. Like there's a new character named Thunderbird. Not Native American Thunderbird that we're used to, but a Middle Eastern Thunderbird. And he just was with the X-Men, but you don't find out how he joins. Hey, funny enough, until this issue right here, X-Men Unlimited number 27, which is the flashback issue. And this is drawn by Brett Booth and a bunch of anchors that looks like Ron Lim on art. And actually, some of this art looks really rushed. Not the best example of this omnibus here. Most of the art here is gorgeous by Lionel Francis Yu. This is all Brett Booth here. More of the X-Men Unlimited series. Eh, some of the character designs like Beast left a little me wanting ah the neo i forgot the, okay so yeah you may or may not remember the neo if you don't remember the neo don't worry nobody at marvel does either nobody at the x-man editorial does because those characters were kind of wiped off the face of the earth right after scott lobdell's eva destruction crossover so let's look through here here's some more of that gorgeous adam kubert i kind of dig gene gray's phoenix outfit here 
that's really cool. And honestly, I really like Cable's outfit too. He's wearing his dad's goggles around his neck, because at the time, like I said, his dad is dead. He also has the scimitar, or scimitar, he's still carrying that around until he knows for sure that Apocalypse is dead. And there's Thunderbird. Thunderbird and Betsy Braddock, Psylocke, kind of like develop a relationship too. There is Strife. You may know him better as the clone of Cable. Yeah, I kind of dug um, Archangel's outfit, and Betsy's is pretty cool too. I will say that this isn't the strongest Claremont stories. It is Chris Claremont, and I'm a Claremont fanboy. I absolutely love him. He's just one of those writers that I kind of apologize for, no matter what he does. Even though how horrible Extreme X-Men was at times. You're goddamn right I would buy the Extreme X-Men omnibuses if they came out, because I'm a completist and a huge Claremont fan, which is the reason why I bought this, so this may not be for everybody. Like I said, it's got some pretty lame villains. The stories are kind of, I would say 50-50. There are some really strong stories here, and then some others that are kind of weak. There are some stories in here that are kind of hokey, and if you're not used to the Claremont way of storytelling, you might find them kind of stupid. Now, that being said, with the stories being 50-50, like I told you, it is up to you. Uh, this is definitely for somebody that is a completist, somebody that likes X-Men a lot and knows a little bit about the history of X-Men. I do not recommend this for anybody that is just jumping on the X-Men. This would not be my recommendation. This is kind of like a welcome home to an old friend that's been gone for a while. And that's what it kind of feels like, the way that he's writing these characters. It's like he never left. So while that hits nostalgia for some of us older readers, I don't think a new reader would appreciate any of that. And just think some of these stories are kind of lazy and dumb. I would say 50, if not a little bit more than percent of this book is pretty solid but the other half is just there okay i guess you can't expect every single issue in an omnibus collection to be amazing and that is totally not what you get here there's my boy cable i love that outfit again um so yeah do i recommend this only to those x-men enthusiasts to those claremont fanboys like myself to those completists or people that just collect omnibuses, you know you are already going to buy this or you have already bought it. But to somebody that's on the fence, whether this story is a good X-Men story or not, I would wait. There are better ones out there that are still in print. Maybe wait until it goes into discounted bins. Unless, of course, you're afraid that this is going to go out of print. Then, yes, of course, buy, buy, buy. Uh, here's the Black Sun miniseries. And the Black Sun miniseries was kind of the return of the character of Magic. Um... It kind of goes back to the story of when she once told Kitty Pryde that if she were to die, that she would have her soul armor and the sword. So how is she back? Well, I'm not going to spoil that for you. There is a pretty cool revelation. And if you keep up with current X-Men comics, you know that she is really back. But this is not all what it seems to be during this little miniseries here. Um, so let's go through here, not the greatest artwork. I really like the Black Sun series. I thought that was great. I think Dream's End is awesome. I thought Claremont came in pretty strong towards the beginning, and then it kind of petered off towards the middle, but it picks back up towards the end. Um, then you're forced to read some of this Maximum Security tie-ins. This is art by, it looks like, Salvador La Roca. And actually, I dig his artwork here. This is before he started what I assume is now Photoshopping things like Greg Land. Maybe not to that extreme, but I really liked his work during this time. Yeah, it reminded me a lot of the Carlos Pacheco kind of art style. And this is when Rogue was learning to control her powers. There's some pretty cool things in here. And Professor X coming back to Earth, and Bishop coming back to the fold of the X-Men, where he's been hanging out with Deathbird in the future. Real, uh, yeah, see, I, like, I love this art style. This is Lionel Francis Yu. Love his stuff. And Claremont also brings back a lot of characters we hadn't seen in a while. Like this young lady here from Excalibur, Sarise, Cerise, can never remember how to pronounce her name. And he also points out some plot holes that were kind of left dangling there after he left. So I thought that was pretty cool that he did that. Because he was always a guy that tied up his loose ends. Uh, here's the return of Bishop with that weird Brett Booth rushed artwork. He's usually okay. He's one of those image guys that started off with back Backlash, I think was the name of the character. Here's the scrolls that Professor X was training, the mutant scrolls from the Ages of Apocalypse storyline, or the 12 storyline, rather. 
And here's the Dreams and crossover. This is the one that kills off a couple of characters that were part of the X family for years. This is Matthew R or Michael Ryan, Robert Weinberg. He's the author that wrote this. Um, let's see. Yeah. yeah, Michael Ryan's okay. His artwork was alright. He did some of the Weapon X stuff later on. I think he's also an image guy. There's Post, the character from Onslaught. Not much to say about that. Uh, this is the Joe Pruitt story here from the X-Man, the last X-Man, Bishop, number 16. This is the last issue. It's kind of a weird last issue because it's like part three of a four-part crossover. So it doesn't acknowledge, like, wrapping up the other storylines, which I, I guess issue 14 kind of did that. Sorry, I'm just rambling here. This is the finale to Dream's End with Brett Booth and Leon Lionel Francis, you on artwork and the aftermath and it's a little bit of retconning here by chris claremont actually if i remember correctly a little thing that he puts in there where professor x was supposed to have met wolverine during the vietnam war so or korean war i think so we'll see and then it introduces us more into those diary of destiny the destiny diaries the ones that she wrote before she died where she got killed by legion on muir island so this is X-Men 109, which is the final issue that is collected here. And actually, 109 kind of serves as the prelude to Extreme X-Men. So I wouldn't be surprised if they do do an Extreme X-Men omnibus. They don't also include experts from there. So here are some variant covers for the X-Men Revolution. I had no idea there were that many until I opened this omnibus up. I remember seeing this. This is the Dynamic Forces one? Nope, I'm wrong. It's not. This is the Dynamic Forces one. This is... Nope, that is also the Dynamic Force. Jeez. Um, I always liked that cover. Because I remember there was an ad for, like, Welcome Back to the X-Men, Chris Claremont. Hope they survived the experience. And that just gave me goosebumps. Because, like I said, I'm such a Claremont fanboy. Here are some more sketches. And I think these are reprints of the Return of Chris Claremont issues. Um, hmm. There's the ad I was talking about. Yeah, welcome back to the X-Men, Chris Claremont. Hope they survive the experience. Experience. Witty. Spelled with just an X. And here looks like some artwork by Dave Cockrum, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. That's the variant. Just the original artwork. And... The art on the covers without the titles. I had never realized that Black Sun was one ongoing piece of art. It's pretty interesting. And more of the art. And that is it. And one more thing before I put this up really quick. They do have enough material for another omnibus that will collect everything between this and new x-men for example they have the remaining issue or the aftermath of dreams and the search for cyclops which is kind of the aftermath of the 12 and ages of apocalypse or for that matter the gambit and bishop miniseries or the black sun magic miniseries which goes on to reveal who magic really was and what where she came from and even destruction which makes sense why it wasn't collected in this omnibus because that was written by Scott Lobdell, and it was a crossover, kind of like his last hurrah before Grant Morrison's new X-Men. So, I mean, they've got enough material to do another omnibus. It's almost as if Marvel had planned this. And that was it. That pretty much is everything about this omnibus. I hope I was able to steer you clear of it, or I hope I was able to talk you into getting it if you were on the fence. If you have any questions or if I didn't cover something, please let me know in the comments down below. Or let me know in the comments down below if you picked this up, if I wasn't the only one that's a Chris Claremont apologist and a completist. <laughs> that would make me feel so much better. So thank you again for watching. Don't forget to check out our weekly show that comes out every Thursday and our old reader and new reader segment that we do live at 8 o'clock p.m. Eastern Standard Time every Tuesday. So check us out. Again, this was Omar, and thank you very much for watching. Have a great day.